Hello, this is Deus, and this is a Paint Shop Pro tutorial on the basic functions of photo editing. Now, we're going to start at the very basic. Now, first off, everybody knows how to open and save pictures, obviously. I'm just going to make one comment on saving photos. Now, the most commonly used imagery files on websites are JPEGs and GIFs. Alright, so if you want to save imagery so that you can post them on the internet or on websites, it'll have to most likely be in JPEG or GIF files. Now, as far as your projects are concerned and imagery that you have added layers to or paint to and so on and so forth, keep in mind that if you save an image to a JPEG or a GIF file, it loses all of its history in layers and becomes one solid image that you can't like backtrack on or undo anything to. It becomes a finalized image. But you can save your projects as a PSP image file, which will save the project itself with all of its steps and all of its layers and everything still separated. Now with that being said, let's move on to some basic photo functions. Now everybody likes to use the shortcuts like the one step and the smart photo fix and all this stuff. But word to the wise, there's a lot of better effects and ways to make your images look softer or more detailed without using these basic fixes. For one thing, most people will use the photo fix thinking that it's gonna make the image look clearer or whatever else. Generally, in my opinion, it makes them grainy and more staticky looking. Color balance tends to work a lot better with that. I like color balance. With this, you can make your photos much warmer and smoother. And it's a lot of the times it'll clean up a lot of the fuzz. It's all on handsome color. Now, the noise removal is one quick effect that I like. But again, a lot of these effects don't work that well, and they are shortcuts. You generally want to use filters or extra add-ons to get the more precise look that you want. You can find plenty of plugins and add-ons that are free online that will make you lots of shortcuts and make things a lot easier for you to do effects to your photos. Now. <clears throat> One of the most common things people like to do is to stack photos on top of each other and add and subtract things from photos. Now, this process you'll have to use layers. Now, you take your photo that you want to add to the other one, copy, and then go to the image you want to add it to and paste as a new layer not a new image. It'll keep it separate. New layer. And there you go. From here we can use our mover tool to glide it around and place it in different places. Now we can also erase pieces of it with the eraser tool and so on and so forth letting the background to the other show, photo show. Now, what else you can do is, because the layers are separate, if you draw on one layer, it will not show on the other layer. Now, that is something you should definitely keep in mind, because it is a big deal when you want to do serious paint and editing, because you're going to want to have an assortment of layers without be affecting the other photos until you're ready to place your effects. Like, <clears throat> for an example, you can create even another layer 
I find it easier to come over to the layers palette and right click do art media layer and then you have a transparent sheet on top of your photo now obviously you don't see it because it's transparent but now I won't be actually painting on the image I'll be painting on the clear transparent image and after I'm done painting then I can mat it to the other photos and this way you can erase things and add and subtract things without actually affecting the other photos now this little screen that just popped up will pop up on uh, numerous types of formats don't worry too much about it it just changes the color scheme so that you can paint on it let's see do 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 paint 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 sorry for the lag it's the recorder now you can erase this like I did with this and it won't affect the other two layers and you can jumble the layers and put them under each other and all of that now <clears throat> all done with that basic function now your paintbrush is gonna be one of your favorite things to screw with stuff with now you're gonna wanna try to find extra brushes and I'll create another tutorial after this to show you how to import and create brushes and picture tubes. But for now, I'm just going to tell you you're going to want to get more. And with having varying brushes, you'll be able to do varying effects. Now, see all these pretty fancy brushes? You'll probably get a lot less use out of those. You really want to have the plain small brushes that come in different transparency levels because with them you can stack and paint around and make subtle changes to the photos which are generally the types of changes you want to make I mean seriously how nice does it look when you got like this big thing you know you're gonna wanna make a lot more subtle adjustments okay now I'm gonna just show you the background eraser. Now this is an odd tool and you have to remember how it will it will help you to understand how this tool actually functions. Most people just think oh it's gonna erase the background. N n not really. It, it doesn't really function in that way. What it does is is it erases certain color schemes according to what you pass over. Now here's an example like I want to erase the white here okay now what it's actually doing is it's not erasing the background it's erasing the first color you touch to and drag over <clears throat> see and it's leaving most of her image now the problem with the background eraser is because it doesn't actually erase the background it erases a color a lot of the times when you have pictures with high blends and all different colors you can't really cut the background out the way you want and you'll end up doing something like this and going through and see how it just erases it anyway because it's close to the same background color so keep that in mind that the background eraser does work very well, but it actually only erases the color scheme that you first click on. Now, one thing you can do about that, if you can really get up all close on a picture, is that like you can go right to the pixel of the color you want to remove. And regardless of how big the eraser tip is, it will only erase the colors that it crosses over. So, like, this little bit of white here, you see? Like, if I click just on the gray spot, you see it'll just remove that part of the photo. And it won't, and it'll still leave the purple and the black. 
Okay, this video is starting to run long, so I'm going to finish this one up and start in the next part. Thank you for checking out my video. There will be more to come. Thank you.